who practiced how to pronounce the team that uh, Rick Pitino's coaching? Paulie? Panatha. Panathinaikos. Panathinaikos. Yes. Is that it? Yeah. I believe that's what it is. Greece. Yeah. He's going to Greece. Uh, Panathinaikos. It's a legendary uh, team in Greece where Rick Pitino is going. And uh, Coach joins us now. It took us, I don't know, 10 minutes to be able to come up with how to pronounce that name. How long did it take you? Well, uh, about as long as some of the people who called me on the phone uh, to speak to me about the job. (laughs) So it's a... I think I'm going to call everybody by their first name. <laughs> do you know Do you know the roster? I do. I've been watching film. Uh, you know, I haven't 100 percent taken the job. I, my family's all flying in for the holidays, and I owe it to them to discuss with them. But uh, I have studied the film. They're obviously losing. That's why they fired the coach. Uh, you know, it's basketball over there is quite different. I coached the Puerto Rican national team. It's it's like the old NBA in terms of physicality. The days of when I coached Oakley and Ewing, extremely physical. It's not like the NBA today. Uh, the offensive passing and spacing is great, but it's very physical basketball. All right, your family's coming in for the holidays. What if your family says, you know what, we don't want you to go to Greece? Then pretty much, you know, they have sacrificed for me all my life. They have picked up and traveled uh, at, at, at a moment's notice, and, and they're the most important thing uh, in any family's life is your children and your wife, and certainly uh, they know how much I love teaching the game. They know how much I miss it. And that being said, if, if they're against it, I'm, well, I'm going to go by their wishes. But you said it's not official yet. What are you waiting on? Just them. Okay. Uh, I think the contract's all set. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I think it's all set. Just want their approval. Uh, that's really, really important to me. And, and then I'll just take off for six months. And uh, the one thing I don't want to do is stop learning. You know, even at 66, uh, when you, I can watch 100 games a week, and it's not like being on the sidelines. But I don't want to stop learning. Um, once a teacher, always a teacher. And uh, I'm excited to get back on the sidelines. But it was a couple of months ago, uh, back in September, when you said you were done, when you were on the show. What changed? Well, I was really, really down in the dumps at, at Louisville uh, for not even waiting to see the, the verdict of, of my innocence. And then I was even more upset at the Southern District of New York, and, and even more so today, when they came out in the trial and exonerated me, they used people to show my innocence, basically, and that wasn't their intention, but got people up on the stand and said, no, we kept it from Rick Patino. He was not to know the dad said that. The uh, guy Gassanola said that. Uh, and But they had all that information when this all started. And instead of saying Rick Patino was innocent at that time, they used me for publicity for the uh, this so-called scandal. I don't know how much of a scandal it actually is. And But they had all that information on tape that I did not know anything. And they put my name along with Jim Laranega in a complaint and um, all it did was put my name on the front page of newspapers and make me look like I did know something, and um, it hurt. But that being said, it's time to let go of the bitterness. It's time to get back on the sidelines and, and start teaching again. But do you feel like the FBI made you the face of this investigation, the poster boy? They did, I, but I don't know if it's the FBI as much as the prosecutors. The prosecutors, the FBI gathers the information. Now, they, they had the wiretaps of all these people saying, we've got to keep it from Rick Patino. He doesn't know about it. So they had that information, but they still put my name in a complaint based on this con artist saying, oh, we'll call Rick Patino, and he's tight with Adidas. He's the big shot at Adidas. He'll get us more money. And that was a total con job, Uh, the guy obviously not knowing he was speaking to the FBI. So uh, I don't know if it was the FBI. They just gather. I think the FBI just gathers information, gathers the evidence, and then the prosecutors decide what to do with it. I was wondering when I saw the news that you were going to take this job, or at least contemplating it, it's that desire to have a positive at the end of your resume. If this is your last job, you know, it was going to be Louisville, and this is what was going to be on your basketball tombstone. And I wondered how you can sort of rewrite your coaching uh, legacy, or at least the ending of it. How important is that to you? It's important, Dan, even though... You know, so many people called me to congratulate me on the trial and say, you're in. I said, I said, what did, did you read it on? What page did you read it on? Page 35 instead of being on the front page. Mm-hmm. And it, it brought to mind a Tommy Lasorda quote. 
he said, when you, you know, you, you think you have your troubles and you realize that 80% of the people really don't care. And then the other 20% really enjoy that you have them. And, and I, I, I always laughed at that quote. It's really true. 80% of the people really don't care that you, you may be innocent. And the other 20% are, 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 are glad you went through that pain. So it's it, it's something I, I, I don't I didn't want to leave the game like that. I, I knew from day one I, I would not tolerate anything that went on in that dormitory. I knew I would not tolerate anything that would hurt the university or hurt more important hurt the players. So I, I didn't want to leave on that note. And I'm hoping that Greece is not my last step. Maybe I, I'll love it and want to stay over there or stay in the Euro League or try the NBA or go back to college. Whatever opportunity may be out there for me, but I didn't want to leave on that note. Talking to Rick Pitino, Continental Tire Coach's Corner. And at 66, I don't know how long you want to continue to coach, but you strike me as uh, almost uh, Joe Paterno. Like Brent Musburger said, there are certain people who have a job as a coach, and then there are, there are coaches. And you kind of fall into that category like Paterno. Um, Brent said when Paterno stops coaching, he'll die. And that's what happened. Well, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that because – even though I was in Miami and even though I was doing things I've never done before and in somewhat enjoying life, there wouldn't be a, a moment that would go by at the end of the night. I'd have a difficult time shutting my eyes with realizing how much I missed it. it, it it's in your blood. It's an addiction. Uh, coaching is an addiction. It's like anything else. You miss the camaraderie with the players. You miss the development with the players. You miss the intensity on the sidelines. You miss the competitive nature of the game itself. And you just can't live without it. You, you really can't. I know I can. Uh, some people can, like Al McGuire, Dave Gavitt. They did a great job with uh, retiring. John Wooden, mm -hmm. they, they were fabulous at stepping away from the game. I, I just have a very difficult time putting my, my eyes to bed at night thinking I'm not going to coach the next day. I was telling my guys this morning about what you were talking about, the physicality of coaching there. I, I Did your predecessor get fired for threatening a referee at the end of a game that – he won. That was the owner. Oh, the oh, the oh, the owner. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think it was a, a, a both referees. Uh, uh, that it got me a little nervous when I read that. But uh, I have spoken with the owner. He's a very passionate man who wants to win. Wow. And uh, uh, but he's he loves his team and has great. He, he doesn't get involved with the actual coaching part. So that's good. But you he, took doesn't your, care, he doesn't care for referees. You took your teams over there, didn't you? And 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 uh, yes, to play. I, took, I, I played my uh, my Kentucky teams went over there and played there uh, back in the day. I've, obviously, I coached the Puerto Rican national team, and that's the same FIBA basketball is the same physical type basketball. And you know, I'm, I'm quite uh, knowledgeable about it. But let's face it: look, I'm sure the coach that was let go has great experience. I'm sure he's an outstanding basketball coach. Uh, so it, it 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 comes to mind. That do you have the players to win? Can you maybe add to the roster and improve the players? I think that's something that their ownership is looking at. And can you motivate the players to play better at the defensive end? Uh, offensively, you're not going to change a whole lot when you first when you come in the middle of the season. You make subtle changes, but at the defensive end, you got to make a lot of serious changes because that's generally why you're losing. You got white and blue as uh, the colors over there. I think the uh, first game, white suit, blue tie. Nice little statement there, Coach. <laughs> We're playing Moscow. And uh, it's the, the league is quite interesting because you, you go to Spain, Italy, and Moscow, and you go to Tel Aviv and Lithuania and, and Germany. And it, it's really exciting as far as that's concerned uh, to see all these different countries and, and experience it. It's something I, I've not done and uh, looking forward to it. You uh, got an invitation from Coach Cal to go back to Kentucky. Uh, are you going to take him up on that offer to get an ovation? You know, to tell you the truth, um, I, I when I wrote that book, I called it Camelot. I spent seven years at Kentucky and didn't have a bad day. It was the opposite of the last few years at Louisville. Never had a bad day. Took over a scandal-ridden program and, and turned it around where we went to three Final Fours. And actually, with my assistant, we had three championship games in a row, which is unheard of. But the student body at Kentucky uh, look at me as the Louisville coach. And they were not born when I was the Kentucky coach. They probably have very little knowledge except from their parents what I did at Kentucky. So I, re I told John I really appreciated the invite. It was so nice of him to think of me. But I'm going I'm to let him just do his thing and 
uh, I, I don't need to cry anymore. Cry if they gave me a, a, a great ovation. Cry if they booed me. <laughs> so I don't need to cry anymore. I've cried enough in my life. Uh, you know what? Just bring Leitner with you, and then you know that they're going to hate somebody more than you, Coach. <laughs> That's exactly true. <laughs> hey, uh, congrats. Safe travels. Uh, happy holidays to you, and uh, good luck. Dan, thank you so much. Happy holidays to you. That's uh, Rick Pitino, headed to Greece, it looks like. Not officially official, but uh, looks like he'll be coaching again. And I think wanting the opportunity to coach in the NBA again or college basketball again. So maybe you do a pit stop over there for a year or a season, then you come back. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.